Thinking of going to Hawaii, we just came back from a 30 day stay in Oahu and found a bunch of fun things to do that aren't always talked about on all the different websites online. So keep watching if you wanna learn about some spots that are a little bit off the beaten path, but definitely worth exploring if you wanna experience more of what makes Oahu a paradise on earth. Also, you definitely need a car in this place. There's a lot to explore. And so I'll leave a little tip at the end of the video on how to get the best car rental rates on the island. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alvin and I explore concepts and ideas on how to live happier, healthier, and more productive lives. Part of that is play. So today I'll share a couple of my favorite things to do on Oahu. Okay, so number one on my list is the Willy Willy Nui Ridge Trail. I think I said that right. If you're into hiking and adventuring, then Hawaii has got everywhere else, in my opinion, beat in terms of nice hikes and great views. This hike is a longer one. It's about 4.7 miles in and out, and you'll end up climbing around 1,600 feet. It took us roughly two hours and change, so definitely be prepared to drink a little water, bring some snacks, and wear shoes that can handle the mud and the rain because this one is pretty muddy. The island is divided by these big ridges. And as you go up and into the top of the spine, the clouds and the water also start to form and condense. So it does become more wet. Even if it's sunny in Waikiki, when you look up at the ridge, it's always covered in clouds because the moisture is there. So make sure to pack stuff that prepares you for a slightly moist climate. Now, as you get closer to the top, it does become harder and harder to continue climbing because you'll find these stairs that get progressively steeper and steeper. It becomes like a stair stepper, but it's totally worth it. And the views coming back down are amazing. In my opinion, that's the best part. I've done a lot of hikes in my life. I've gone to Half Dome. I've done Angel's Landing. And while they're all different, my favorite is Willy Willy New because of all the lush greenery and because of the fact that you can look down towards the North Shore and see a sprawling beach and then look back over your shoulder and see just this nice, beautiful green valley. So the next one is the Olamana Peak Trail. Okay, so Olamana is a 4.4 mile out and back, sort of similar to Willy Willy New, but the payoff is pretty different. You'll hike in and there will be a couple of steep parts where you have to climb. They've actually installed ropes for you to climb up. It's not too hard. If you're adventurous at all, you'll be totally fine. I saw families and kids and little boys and girls doing this path and they were killing it. The payoff is unique because there are three different peaks that you'll end up at. And already from the first peak, you can see the two other peaks ahead, which are pretty cool to look at already. But if you wanna take another 30 minutes and walk forward to the second peak, then you get a grander straight on view of the third peak, which is the biggest peak. We didn't go all the way out to the third one because in our opinion, the view from the third one is probably worse than the view from the second one. And we didn't wanna put in the extra one hour round trip to go from second peak to third peak and then back to second peak. This one did also take us roughly two hours and change and we got pretty hungry near the end. So make sure to pack some sort of snack. All right, another natural feature Feature, pally notches. This one's a little bit more dangerous. So if you're not super adventurous, then I suggest you just don't go to this one. This is less of a hike and more of a climb. It's a muddy trail and they've got ropes to help you climb up. I went with a couple of my friends, only roughly 0.7 miles because it's more vertical, but in that short 0.7 miles, they do climb almost 500 feet from bottom to top. It is an out and back. So you go in and up and then down and out. All right, next place is the Kakaako Farmer's Market, which is open on Saturdays from I think eight or 9 a.m. through midday around 1 p.m. This is a fun, nice weekend activity to do. There are a lot of vendors serving all sorts of different things from juices to coffee to dim sum. Our favorite was by far and away the green juice there. I think the guys are called the Oman Oman Company. The Omano, Omano Man, Oma, I don't know how to pronounce it. But you'll find them there, they have an amazing green juice. It's the best green juice I've ever had. They have, I think, mint, celery, spinach, all sorts of different healthy uh, ingredients. And they make it somehow taste really good. There's also fresh coconuts being chopped there. People are buying fresh coconut juice. There is poke from Ono's Poke. They have great mochi. There's sugar cane juice over there. There's mango toast. It's overall a pretty good time. They've also got live music. Okay, this next one is a touristy one and you'll find them on a lot of lists, but it's definitely worth checking out if you're into just beautiful landscapes. It's Kualoa Ranch and there are a bunch of different tours you can do. You can do horseback riding, you can do ATVing. We personally took the ATV option. In mythology, Hawaiians believe that this was the 
cradle of man, the birthplace of man. I think one of the last kings of the island allowed one of his favorite aides to buy up a lot of this land. And that's exactly what he did. And that land is now still in that family. And they run a business allowing movies to come shoot on the property. So it's like a Hollywood of Hawaii. A lot of the Jurassic Park movies were filmed here. That's their claim to fame in their marketing materials. We did a ATV tour, it was roughly around two hours. While the ATV tour does proceed in a single file line and you can't go super fast and go off-roading, they do have a, a trail path that you follow. At some points you do get up to 20 miles per hour, so it is pretty fun. It does get dusty because you're trailing other ATVs, so make sure you wear a mask and some eye protection to keep the dust out of your system. All right, another touristy one. And I gotta admit that the first three times I went to Oahu, I skipped it because I thought it was a tourist trap. And finally I decided to, okay, let's do it. Let's do Diamond Head. And I don't know why I was skeptical because it's actually a really beautiful place to go for a quick little hike. Now it's very heavily trafficked. There are a lot of people on the path and a lot of age ranges as well. You have young kids, you have older people. Uh, it's not too hard. Anyone can really do it. It starts in a parking lot and it takes you up to the top of the crater. And at the top, you have a bunch of different viewpoints. You can look down over Honolulu. You have great sweeping views of uh, the Lanikai area. Parking is around 10 to 15 bucks. And make sure you go a little bit earlier in the day because during midday and lunch peak, the parking lot does start to fill up. They also have some really delicious fresh pineapple juice at the bottom. So make sure you get that. Overall, the hike takes around 30 minutes. In all of the Oahu area, I'd say this is probably the best bang for your buck in terms of the quality of the views at the top and the amount of effort and time that you have to put in. Next one, Kanaoe Sandbar. So there is a little strip of sand in the middle of the ocean and you have to make sure you go at the right time because when we went, unfortunately, the water level was too high. But when it's low, that sandbar becomes a tiny little private beach. Around this area is a ton of marine life. And so we snorkeled and we were able to see a bunch of turtles swimming around and nestling in the rocks and resting, as well as a bunch of tropical fish. Okay, next one is Lanikai Beach. This is my personal favorite beach in the entire world so far. It's definitely a good mix of tourists and locals. In Waikiki, you see a ton of tourists. In the west side of Oahu, you see a ton of locals and not many tourists. Lanikai is a nice mix where you have a little bit of both. And there's a reason why people come here. It's one of the best shorelines in my opinion, and really great views of all the different land formations right off of Oahu. The water there is also super calm and placid, which I think makes the beach even more relaxing to be at because you can sit in the low, shallow part of the water and just relax. Now, you do want to go a little earlier in the day because the drive from Waikiki and Honolulu to Lanakai is roughly around 40 minutes. And because it's on the north side of the island, the sun does cross over the ridge and eventually disappear a little earlier in the day. And once the sun is gone, it does get a little colder. There's also a lot of moisture in that area. So periodically, the clouds will form right along the ridge on the backside of the beach and you'll get a slight drizzle here and there. So make sure to bring layers. Okay, Cocoa Head. You may have seen this hike. You may have been intimidated. It's one of my favorite things to do and it's super great for your cardio. So I think this hike was an old train track that they used to use to transport things up to the top of the mountain, probably for military purposes. And they've turned it into a long straight vertical path for locals to hike. If you're very aggressive and you're trying to exercise, you can probably get up there in 15 minutes if you're in great shape. Otherwise, I think on average for most people, it'll take 25 minutes-ish. When you get 80% of the way up there, there is a section where the stairs start to just hover in air as the dirt that rests below disappears for a short segment. There is a way to get around this scary section. So you can just take a short right off of the train tracks and take a little dirt path around that section for the people who want a little bit more safety. I definitely recommend doing this on a sunnier day where there's not a lot of rain because the planks and the steps are made of wood and wood does tend to get slippery when it's wet. There's also a shooting range and a bunch of tennis courts at the base of the hike in case you're interested in those as well. Okay, let's talk a little bit about surfing. Obviously, Hawaii, great place to surf. Oahu has some of the best surfing options for newbies and more seasoned veterans. If you're looking for some calmer waves, then Waikiki is a perfect place to go. The waves there are nice and gentle. They are perfect for a lot of beginners that are learning how to surf. That's where I tried to learn how to surf. And there are a lot of surfboard rental shops in that area. My favorite surfboard rental shop was Moku, which was located just a block off of Waikiki Beach across the street from the Hyatt Hotel. And they have 
a ton of boards all the time, super quick. You get in, you get out, and it's only $8 an hour. So you go in, you tell them how many hours you prepay, and then you go and take a board and go and have a good time on the water. When you're done, you bring the board back and that's it, you drop it off. They don't even really keep track of how long you've had it. Waikiki also is a great place to surf because you get amazing views of Diamond Head. Okay, for something a little bit more advanced, you wanna to go to Bonsai Pipeline on the North Shore. I didn't surf there because I'm not that good, but it's a great place for people to just watch pro surfers do their thing. I think a lot of the pro surfing companies put their athletes up on that beach because a lot of the houses actually have a lot of branding from Ruka and whatever those companies are. The waves get pretty high and pretty intense and yeah, it's nice to just watch if you're not a surfer. Okay, near Bonsai Pipeline is something called Shark's Cove. There's a natural rock formation that's created sort of a dish and water comes in through a couple of breaks in that rock formation. And if you're not a great swimmer or if you wanna bring your kids, then Shark's Cove is the perfect place for people to hang out in and relax. Okay, this next one is a little different. It's the Bishop Museum. I'm the kind of person that loves a great tale. And if that tale is true and based in actual facts, even better. And that's what museums are to me. So if you come here, you'll learn a lot about all of the ancient Hawaiian history, but also the more recent history. The history of Hawaii is actually pretty interesting. It was originally a kingdom and at some point was actually annexed by the United States and taken in as a state. It was a little illuminating for me because what I realized was that annexation was actually hostile. The US business community through a coup d'etat on the Kingdom of Hawaii. And that's why to this day, there are a lot of natives who are very anti-tourism and anti-mainland because they want their independence. So natives are native Hawaiians, people who have come from this land, whereas locals are people who have come to Hawaii and now live there. But yeah, short history lesson there for you, unsolicited. Bishop Museum, amazing place to learn some history. They've got original fishing hooks from thousands of years ago, as well as poi pounders, which were these like huge mortar and pestle things that they used to pound poi with to process their native vegetable. And even a tiny original surfboard, which was really interesting to see. Okay, next one, Ala Moana Mall. I know you're thinking, what, a mall? This is a really nice mall. And if you didn't already know, sales tax in Hawaii is 4.5% which is roughly half that of California. So if you're buying like a $3,000 handbag or something, you'll save a couple hundred bucks by doing it here. Oftentimes brands will actually have special Hawaii pricing too, so that not only do you get to save on that sales tax, but the price of a handbag in that Hawaiian location might actually also be a couple hundred dollars off from the mainland price. So you get the sales tax savings and the retail price discount. If you're into shopping and designer labels and stuff like that, they have Louis, Chanel, Bottega, a bunch of different watch shops. If you're not into that super high-end stuff, they have Lululemon, they have Aritzia, they've got all of the top brands. Okay, let's talk about the West Side a little bit. We have Waikiki beaches, very touristy. We have Lanikai beaches, good mix. If you want even more of a natural, more remote local beach, then go to the west side. You won't often find too many tourists here, which is nice. It's less crowded and you hear a lot of kids laughing and playing. I had two beaches here that I really liked, Nanakuli Beach and a secret beach, which I won't divulge here because it's actually adjacent to some backyards of some local homes. And because it's not a very big beach, it's not a party scene at all. It's almost like a private little nook. I think this secret beach is actually a little landing spot for turtles because every time we went there, there was a turtle or two just relaxing on the sand. And we sat there and had ourselves a couple of drinks and sat literally three or four feet away from a turtle, which was pretty awesome. Okay, last thing on the west side is the Puo Hulu pillbox hike. This is a really nice 40 minute quick up and down with a lot of switchbacks with great views at the top. You can see all of the west side shore and the street below, as well as sweeping views of a valley. At the top, there are two pillboxes that you can stand on and hang around in. And if you go past the back pillbox, there's actually a back ridge hike for the more adventurous. We didn't take that hike. I think it takes a lot more time and planning, but if that's something that you're interested in, then you can go on all the trails and find that hike. Oh yeah, and before I forget, I need to tell you about that car rental hack. Okay, so when we try to rent a car, we try three different options to try and get the lowest rate. The first one is to use our credit card travel perk 
to get the Avis member pricing. We have the Chase Sapphire Reserve and it allows us to get the free Avis whatever membership it is and we get discounted rates through that directly on Avis's website. Okay, option number two is to use Turo, which I used for the first time recently in Hawaii. And Turo is great because it gives you competitive rates, but also sometimes a wider selection of cars. So you can find premium cars like Teslas or Broncos or whatever that you might not find through a traditional car rental company. And then the last one is autoslash.com, which a friend told me about a few years ago. Autoslash is a website where you go and tell them about all of your different memberships and you tell them the dates and the kind of car that you want. And then they crawl a bunch of different sources on the internet to collect the best options for you. And they send it to you via email. Now we went to Oahu for the first time in late 2020. We actually used the auto slash and we're able to get an SUV for roughly $16 a day, uh, which was insane, super cheap. Now it's roughly back to 60 or 50 a day just because uh, demand is back for travel. All right, that's it. So if you like this video, please click subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.